and we're continuing our study of the book of James. Yeah. We've already survived chapters 1 and 2, therefore we go on further to James chapter 3. A very challenging chapter, in my opinion, and yet one that is so essential in our lives as Christians, as disciples. The title of our lesson this morning as we delve on in is Think Before You Speak. Amen. Amen. I had to think a long time about that one. <laughs> what do you say? you got to think before you speak. As a culture, as a society, we deeply desire, we want to kind of scrutinize what people say. Yeah. What people say on social media, what people say all the time. However, our response to what they say, many times we don't think before we speak. And so I hope that as we look at the scriptures this morning, it's going to persuade you to be a man, be a woman who decides to think before you speak. Now remember, we're starting out the book of James, which is incredibly convicting. Yeah. And yet in the same way, because of what it challenges us to do, to be a set apart from the world in that way, it's inspiring. Yep, yep. It's inspiring to know that we can live this way for God. Yeah. We understand, I encourage you if you're visiting or you don't remember to go back and study up James chapter 1 and, and listen to the sermon about James chapter 1 because it really outlines when James was written, which is probably before 49 AD, a long, 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 long time ago. And that it was written, in fact, by James, the half-brother of Jesus. We remember that James chapter 4, verse 4, it says, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity towards God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. This is what we've really decided is the main theme for the book of James. The book itself was not written, James was not thinking to himself, man, I hope in 2,000 years, people in Texas are going to want to read this. He was writing specifically to our first century brothers and sisters. And so his mindset was to call them out, to challenge them, to get back to the way that they knew they needed to be, because in fact they had drifted back into the ways of the world. And he's saying, don't you understand that you are in, in marriage, you are in a relationship with God, and to go back to the world is to be unfaithful in your relationship with God? Don't you understand that when you decide to have a friendship with the world, that you're choosing no longer to have that friendship with Jesus? But this morning for us, we want to be best Friends with Christ, amen? Amen. The last two weeks we talked about the battles to be won, the battle for your faith, the battle against greed, and therefore we're going to have a victory against deception. That's chapter one. Chapter two, we understood we got to have true faith in the Son. That true faith takes care of everyone. False faith saves no one, and true faith can be done by anyone. Let's jump on into James. Come on, brother. James chapter 3, remember James chapter 2, it's so eloquently hit about faith and deeds and how they are to be synonymous, they are to be simultaneous with one another. You cannot say that you believe in something, but you don't do it. And you're not going to do something unless you really believe in it. It's faith and deeds together. Now James is transitioning into a a different road of thought. And let's see where he goes here in chapter 3, verse 1. It says, Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect. Able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder, whether the pilot, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes great boasts. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. 
All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives and a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. We stop here. What a convicting passage, James. And we find that he's so much diving into just how powerful our tongue is. Just how much power our words carry. And they have the ability to do great for good or to do great for evil. Our first point, as we talked this morning about think before you speak, our first point is, what you say is who you are. What you say is, in fact, who you are. Our words decide who we are. You know, one might read this and think, wait, is it about what we do? Or is it about what we say? Because James was just talking about faith and deeds, and now he's like, hey, now what you say... Dot, dot, dot. No, no, you see, the answer is it what we do or what we say. The answer is simple. Yes. Come on. <laughs> it's both. Yeah, yeah. It's both. What does it mean if we say things and we don't mean them? Well, there's two outcomes. Number one, uh, we're a hypocrite. Yeah. Right? To be a hypocrite is to say one thing and, and then to do another. The word for hypocrite in the Greek is hypocrites which means to be a pretender. Wow. In fact, it's, same, it's from the same root of where we get the word to be an actor. Mm. Right? Everyone who's playing a role in a movie, that's not who they actually are. They're pretending to be somebody. Yeah. And in the same way, when we're being a hypocrite, when we're saying we're a Christian, when we're saying we believe in the Bible, we're actually just playing a role. We're acting rather than living it out. Wow. That's one way in which we say it, but we don't do it. Come on. Secondly, it's to be a liar. Wow. And the word in the Greek is pseudes. It's where we get the word pseudo, right? Pseudo means fake. Mm. You know, like, oh, this is just like a, a, a pseudo, you know, situation. It's a fake situation. It doesn't exist. Mm. Pseudes means to be lying, right? That's where we get the word simply for, for a liar. But here's really fascinating. I, I read this like, wow. It means to be lying. It means to be false, and thirdly, it means to be deceitful. Wow. Because many times we go, well, I didn't lie. I just didn't tell the full truth. Mm. Wow. I didn't, like, lie to them. I just didn't say everything. Th that's to be deceitful. Yeah. And the Bible helps us to understand to be a liar is to be deceitful. It's not to give the full truth. And so we've got to look at our lives, and we're going to look at a passage here. Perhaps we've become, in our own regards, we don't realize it, we've become liars. Or we've allowed ourselves to simply be living out a role rather than being our identity. We've become actors. Look over in Matthew chapter 15. Come on. Tyler. What you say is who you are. Come on, Tyler. Matthew chapter 15. Down in verse 10, the Bible says, Jesus called the crowd to him and said, listen and understand. Isn't that pretty cool right there? Yeah. <laughs> Jesus said, hey, listen. He's like, listen and understand. I hope this morning we're not just trying to listen. Yeah. But we truly want to understand yeah. Yeah. God's word. Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them. But what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles them. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended when they heard this? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots. Leave them. They're blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. Peter said, 
explain the parable to us. <laughs> Are you still so dull? Jesus asked them. Don't you see that whatever enters the mouth goes into the stomach and then out of the body? But the things that come out of the mouth, a person's mouth, come from the heart. And these defile them. For out of the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, slander. These are what a defile a person. But eating with unwashed hands does not defile them. We stop here. You see, Jesus was confronting the religiosity of the time. And the religious leaders had started to establish traditions. Now, traditions by themselves are not bad. But when we place our traditions over the word of God, earlier in the same chapter, Jesus calls them hypocrites. Wow. He says, you honor me with your lips, but your hearts are far from me. You worship me in vain. Yeah. Why? Because you follow the teachings of men. And now Jesus says, listen and understand. We've got to make sure that we deeply want to go after our walk with God to not just read the Bible every day, to look at it like it's another book, or just like part of our, 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 our scrolling of our phone, but then we go, well, I want to understand yeah, bro. Jesus. Come on. Why? Because what we say becomes who we are. He says, listen, it's, it's not what goes into our bodies that makes us, you know, sinful. Although we, got, we should take care of our bodies, amen? Amen. amen. But it's what comes out of our mouths. Yeah. And what comes out of our mouths is an overflow of the heart. You go, well, I didn't mean to say that. Well, that is true, but it's an overflow of the heart. Yeah. And that for us, it, it, after Jesus says it, and he goes on and he explains all these things, the disciples come to him and say, don't you know that the Pharisees were, were offended when they heard this? Jesus was, was not afraid to offend. And, you know, Jesus wanted to speak the truth. Now, here's the thing. You can speak the truth without being loving. Yeah. Yeah. You can totally speak the truth without being loving. However, you cannot love without speaking the truth. Wow. Yeah. And many of us, in the same way that we can put our traditions over the word of God, we can therefore put our sentimentality over the word of God. Wow. And instead of telling those that are in our lives the truth on, on where they're at, the truth on the condition of the world, we go, well, I don't want to offend anybody. Yeah. We live in a society today that doesn't like to be offended. Wow. This is a new. Yeah. This has been going on for 2,000 years. Yeah. Well, well before that. Jesus just said the truth. And you've got to understand that being a true Christian is controversial. Yeah. Being a true Christian, truly following Jesus is controversial. Yep. But the religiosity of today has so traditionalized Christianity that we go, well, let's not offend anybody. Let's not step on any toes. That wasn't what Jesus was. I, I, I forgot. Like, okay, well, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. But that's not, like, quote unquote, actually why Jesus died. Right? He didn't go before Pilate, and then Pilate goes, wait a minute. Uh, did you hear about this Tyler guy? You know, he, he's going to sin, right? So, Jesus, because of Tyler's sins, I now pronounce you to die for them. Right? That, that, that wasn't, like, what he went on there for. He literally goes to the cross because he's convicted by the government, right, of trying to start riots, of, of claiming to be something that is quote-unquote not. That's why he went there. So Jesus died because he stirred and caused so much controversy because he stood for what he believed. He stood for the truth. He stood for the truth to the point where he was willing to die for it. And yes, indeed, therefore, Jesus died on the cross, and he died for our sins. But what put him there in that way physically was something completely different. Mm -hmm. And so we forget that. We go, wow, Jesus was like everybody's friend. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. loved him. He had great hair. Uh, he floated everywhere he went. You know, like he was just a BFF. Like this guy would have every friend on Facebook, every so many followers on Instagram. Like, no, no that's, that's not who Jesus was. Nope. 
he was okay with that. And we've got to be okay. Yes. Because Jesus is like, I know who I am. I say who I am. I am the Son of God. This is the truth. You are who you say. You are what you say. And we've got to make sure that we really say who we are. Yeah, we're disciples. Come on. Come on. We follow Jesus. We're unapologetic about it. And yes, we're going to offend people. And we're not just going to try and go after them and hurt them, quote unquote, with our words. But we're going to understand that we can't tell them, we can't love them unless we give them the truth. Amen. 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 Proverbs 28:23 uh, says, Whoever rebukes a person will in the end gain favor rather than one who has a flattery tongue. Wow. We've got to be willing to tell people the hard truth. Why? Because in the end, they'll be grateful. Yeah. All of us remember those moments as disciples when we were studying the Bible and you heard that thing and it just like, uh, yeah. it just <laughs> you. you go, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to step away because I can't believe you just said this. I can't believe you just said, I'm not right with God. I am perfect. I can't believe that although I didn't know where any of the books of the Bible were and I didn't really know how to study the Bible or what it meant to be saved or backed up any of my traditions or any of my beliefs and, and therefore you're saying that because of that that therefore my family who, who's gone to church my whole life and they, that's what they taught me but that's not really what I believed what I thought and you're saying they're lost too I'm offended I'm, I'm, I'm not no like we've got to tell people the truth no one who sits in Bible says I'll be honest like every Bible study when I'm in with somebody and I've got to say the hard thing I'm like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like praying about it, like sweating, like, okay, I'm gonna, oh man, I hope they still like me after yeah. this. Oh, this is going to be so hard. But anyway, I got yeah. 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 It can't be a flattering tongue. Because, yeah. well, oh, yeah, that's so nice and good and things and that. Okay, hey, okay, you are awesome. I do like you. High five. I'm grateful. But we got to talk about this. Yeah, yeah. Come on. Amen. <laughs> We gotta get down to the brass tacks. And we gotta be willing to have that heart. Yeah. You know, in, in the same way, right after Jesus says that, he says, leave them. They're, they're blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. That's pretty intense. A lot of times, like we wanna, like, as we learn about the Bible, we go, oh great, I just wanna take what I've learned and go back. Yeah. I wanna go back to the place that wasn't teaching this. Back to the place where I didn't see this in the scriptures, and I'll, I'll just kind of like bring it with me, and they'll they'll still lead me. Go wait, wait, like you're gonna go back to the place that didn't tell you the truth? Wow. Jesus, leave them. Yeah. Well, you're telling me to, to to go to a different church? Absolutely, because yeah. it's not about right. who is right. right. It's about what is right. Come on. And once we know what is right, you'll know who's doing it. Yeah. We gotta be a fellowship that we follow the truth. We don't follow people, we follow the scriptures. Yeah, come on, come on. We don't do it, we do it because somebody told us to do it. We do it because we see that Jesus told us to do it. Amen. Then right after that, <laughs> Peter, Peter. <tell> us, <laughs> he says, explain the parable to us. <laughs> and Jesus, he's so loving. Why are you still so dull? <laughs> I thought about that one. Why would Jesus do that? See, Jesus was very clear. He's like, those guys right there are blind teachers. Don't follow them. They're like roots that are going to be pulled up and thrown into fire. Don't do it. He's crystal clear. Yeah. And Peter's like, oh, it must be like a parable. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> right? And many of us, we read the Bible. It's really clear. Yeah. The Bible is not confusing, brothers and sisters. The Bible was written at the literacy level of a 12-year-old. Come on. Isn't that fascinating? Like a 12-year-old can read this. And it's not confusing. Yeah. And yet we have 50 and 60 year olds that have been studying it for years that have their doctorates and many pairs of glasses and degrees on the walls and they're confused by it. Yeah. Well, it could mean this, it could mean that, it could be here, it could be like that. No, the Bible is crystal clear. Yeah. And yet for many of us, because we don't want to put it into practice, Jesus, you have become dull. Yeah. 
Wow. We gotta sharpen ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. There's nothing worse than, than a dull knife. Yeah. 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 It's super discouraging. Yeah. You go, oh, I don't really know. That. Yeah, just try cooking for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and try cutting with a dull knife. See, we gotta be sharp with the word of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because the word of God is sharp. And so if we want to become sharp, and we put with the sharp word of God, and you put them together, it's going to make you sharp. Come on. That's why we got Project Exartrizo for our campus. Woo! Come on. Because if we're honest, some of our campus students, we're starting to get a little dull. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're getting dull in our convictions. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm, should I put the kingdom first? Nah. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. Is baptism really for salvation? Nah. Come on, bro. Do I really need to be pure and righteous? Nah. Come on, bro. Mm -hmm. And we're starting to compromise yeah. in our convictions as students. Yeah. Yeah. And yet you forget you made Jesus Lord. Wow. Yeah. And who we are comes from what we say. Yeah. And you can't just say those are empty words. Let's stop doing that and let's be excited. We're going to put Project X Artizo. It's going to sharpen us. It's oh, going to cool. change our campus. Yeah. It's yeah. going to change our lives. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's get some conviction here. You go, amen, campus students. Well, what about my singles, my marrieds, oh, and my oh, teens? Amen. Oh, yeah. Turn on over, over to Ephesians chapter 4. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4. Let's get some conviction on what the Bible says about what we say about our words. There's so many scriptures. Me, oh my. But I'm not going to go through all of them. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. The Bible says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you are sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling, and slander, along with every form of malice, be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Amen? Amen. Amen. We find right here something that goes over our heads. You know, when the Bible says, do not murder, we go, yeah, dude, that's something serious. Don't do it. Just don't even, we don't, like, we don't have to talk about it, because that, that's how serious it is. But when the Bible says, do not murder, Whatever, we go, well, that one's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. there's, you know, there's, like, there's like a difference right here. Yeah. I mean, Jesus, he says, do not worry. Mm -hmm. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> do we take worry and anxiety with the same seriousness that we would with murder? Uh, yeah. Right? The Bible says here, do not let any unwholesome talk come out. Wow! That's the Bible! It doesn't say, do your best, hopefully, Kind of sort. It's like, no, do not yeah. let any unwholesome talk. And that for us, we've got to check our hearts. Are we building one another up according to the needs there? Or are we tearing each other down? Wow. I'll never forget one of my favorite movies growing up, Bambi. Come on. <laughs> and there's this old saying from a Thumper there in the movie. Yeah. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't, don't say it. anything at all. <laughs> And so what do we do instead? We just go, well, I'm just being honest. Oh. You know, well, I'm just being Bible. Amen? <laughs> do not let any unwholesome talk come out of our mouths. How is our dynamic in communication? As men and women of God, is it at the Bible level? We want to be a Bible church. We believe in Bible salvation, yeah. Bible evangelism, yeah. Bible sacrifice, Bible commitment. But how about... Bible dialogue. Mm. Wow. In our marriages. Great question. With our spouses. Yeah. Are we building up husbands? Are we building up our wives? Reminding them how beautiful, incredible, talented, amazing they are, not just during the welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 Come on, <What>? <laughs> <laughs> Do we build up our husbands? Tell them how grateful we are. Yeah. How sacrificial. How you ride or die. How you got their back. How you, you're with them no matter what. How about in our households? Are the brothers and sisters, the men and women that we live with, are we treating them the way that Jesus would want? 
heart? Mm -hmm. Do we speak to them in the way that Jesus desires? Mm -hmm. <laughs> in our ministries and our Bible talks, are we coming to Bible talk? Are we coming to our ministries? Are we coming to the meetings of the body and speaking in ways that build up the body? I think the one that can go over our heads as well is like, do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up. It says others, but as well it's yourself. Mm. Come on. We can lift others up, but we think and we say really bad things about ourselves. Yeah. 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 And the Bible says, do not do that. Yeah. That's sin. You gotta take it, you gotta deny it, and you gotta make it submissive. Amen. Psalm chapter 15. Come on, bro. This is great. Come on, bro. Psalm 15, verse 3. Because this is not just an issue of, like, a good idea. I want to persuade you this morning, this is literally an issue of salvation. Come on. Yep. That what we say, how we speak to one another, the words that come out of our mouths literally will decide if we go to heaven or hell. The Bible says here in verse 1, Lord, who may dwell in your sacred tent? Who may live on your holy mountain? The, the one whose walk is blameless, who does what is right, who speaks the truth from the heart, whose tongue utters no slander, who does no wrong to a neighbor and casts no slur on others, who despises a vile person, who honors those who fear the Lord, who keeps an oath even when it hurts and does not change their mind, who lends money to the poor without interest, who does not accept a bribe against the innocent. Whoever does these things will never be shaken. Wow. This is intense. Yeah. The Bible is very clear. Mm -hmm. If you do not live this way, you're not going to make it. Wow. Um, come on, bro. And so we go, oh, no, I'm doomed. No, no, see, here's the thing. God's not going to call us to do something that we can't do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's impossible. Yeah. That'd be so horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I know for, for, for parents, imagine you knew that your child could not do something, but you told them they better do it or else. <laughs> That's like psychological abuse. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's not how we want to treat children. No, we, we, we want to, we, we, we believe in them so much. We believe in them maybe at times more than they believe in themselves. Yeah. We go, I know you can do this. Yeah. I know you've got it. And I'm going to push you out of your comfort zone. Yes, you're not going to like it. And I'm not giving you the flattering tongue right now. I'm giving the loving rebuke. But I know it's going to get you there. It's exactly the same way with God. Yeah, Mom. God made you. He's like, I know exactly how you're programmed. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you need. And so I'm going to put you in an uncomfortable situation to get the best out of you. Wow. Yeah. And so what do you need to do? You need to believe that you can live up to what the Bible says. Yeah. Yeah. we got to make sure that we honor God and what we say. And here it says in what we do. It says... Who keeps an oath, even when it hurts. You know, sadly today, in, in quote-unquote Christianity, there's such an emphasis on money. And so when we hear about money, we automatically are like, tuned out. Yep, it's another, another pastor guy that talks about money so he can get a Mercedes and, you know, have a retirement and live in the Bahamas someday. Or like, no, no, no. Like, the Bible says, right, like, the real issue... <laughs> The real challenge on why we take giving to God so serious has nothing to do with finance. Right, yeah. right. God takes care of it. Yeah. Yes, we, we've been here for, for almost six years. Mm -hmm. God's taking care of us. Right. Yeah. We've been good to go. You think that's because we just have a lot of rich people who just give a ton of money? Mm -hmm. I mean, look around. <laughs> <laughs> it's us. <laughs> so how are we still here? So God is not one that goes like you just we need lots and lots and lots of money. No, no, no. Like we're not trying to get rich, guys. We're trying to get to heaven. Yeah. And the Bible says here, if you don't keep your oath even when it hurts, if you just go, you know, not this week, nah, this is more important. And we want to invest in ourselves more than in God's kingdom, it's just you're not going to make it. Many of us here, we don't give to God consistently. Come on. And it shows. It shows. Because it's not just a giving of the act, it's a giving from the heart, as Brian right. talked about. Yeah. And so when our heart condition is greedy, it manifests in other ways. Wow. 
if we were greedy with our money, we're not, we're not going to be like give, giving of our time, nope. of our love, of our uh, commitment. And so for us today, perhaps we've got to make that decision. We've got to get back to keeping our word. Yeah. Come on. Jesus is Lord. So therefore, we honor God and we give and say and do what we said we're going to do. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Look over Revelation chapter 20, 21. Come on. Come on. This was the humdinger for me. Revelation 21. I'll never forget when my, my wife and I lived in, in Los Angeles. And uh, God gave us the, the, the honor to oversee uh, several ministries there. And we every week we have a staff meeting. So those that are uh, full-time in the ministry over there, so they're able to serve, uh, we come together to really talk through the, the, the delicate or intimate details of our church. So that the needs of others can be met. Yeah. Wait, wait, people talk about me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> people talk about me all the time, and I'm grateful. Yeah. Because I know there's people out there that have been put in my life that lead me, that talk about me, so they can help me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come on. And the same way, we're like, wait, leaders talk about me? Absolutely. <laughs> we talk about you all the time. Yeah. Why? So we can help you. Yeah. We want you to get to heaven. Yeah. We go, oh, this guy, mm -mm -mm. <laughs> this girl, <laughs> No, we go, yeah. how can we help this guy? Yes. How can we help this guy? We want to get everyone in. And we bounce back and forth, the ideas and the plans. See, the Bible says here in Revelation 21, here we'll read in a moment. I'll get back to my staff story. So we're in staff, and every week there's needs. I love meeting needs. Uh, so we need somebody to take care of this situation. I'll do it. And, okay, thanks, Tyler. Uh, somebody else for this situation. I'll do it. And pretty soon, like, I'm feeling pretty good about myself because, like, I'm going to take care of all the needs. <laughs> I feel really great about this. So then afterwards, uh, we, we go, to, so my wife and I, and the next week we get to staff, and maybe I was given ten things, and I only did about seven of them. Oh, There's three of them there that didn't get met. In my mind, I'm like, yo, I did seven of them. <laughs> like, I'm doing a great job. And all of a sudden, I'm getting discipled on that. I'm like, you're discipling me for how much I served? Really? Like, I did a bunch. And you got a problem with that? This is not okay. And so we sat down, and, and the brother who's in my life said, bro, let, let's look at a scripture. Revelation 21. Down in verse 6. It says, he said to me, it is done. That's how I felt. It's like, yeah, I got a lot done. <laughs> we, we stop reading that? We, we keep reading? Oh, okay. <laughs> I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the, to the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. Those who are victorious will inherit all this, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the vile, the murderers, the sexually immoral, those who practice magic arts, the idolaters, and all liars... They'll be consigned to the fiery lake of, of burning sulfur. This is the second death. Wow. I'm like, okay, so wh where are you going with this? Well, perplexed. It is done. <laughs> Tyler, you've got to understand. I'm super grateful. Thank you for all that you do. But you've got to understand something. You said you were going to do something, and you didn't do it. If somebody says they're going to do something, and they don't do it, what are they doing? Oh, they're just really busy. No, no Tyler. <laughs> what is the Bible? We're, we're, we're lying. Yeah. Right? Tyler, when you say you're going to do something and you don't, you're a liar. Yeah. I had to go pray. I had to rest. Because I wanted to focus on my good intentions. Right. And my wow. sincerity. Right. Wow. But the Bible's very clear. Like, your yes is your yes, mm -hmm. and your no is your no. Yeah. Anything else comes from the evil one. That's Matthew chapter 5. So I had to really wrestle. Like, okay, I'm going to be a man. When I say something, I'm going to do it. Because it's not a matter of good intentions. It's a matter of my salvation. Literally, if I'm not going to do it, I am a liar. Yeah. And we need to be persuaded from the scriptures. It's the same for us as well. Yeah. If we say we're going to do something, and we don't do it regardless of the intention. Yeah. We've lied. Wow. Yeah, we can change. It's not like, well, 
Once a liar, always a liar. No. And you know, you're, you're going to stand before God one day and think about all the great things you've done. And, be, you know, and I'm about to walk in and like puts my hand on it, like, wait, Tyler. And an angel comes and whispers. He's like, wait, Tyler. Did you say that you were going to bring the, the communion supplies to church that Sunday? <laughs> <laughs> and you forgot them? And they press the button. Ah! <laughs> I don't think that's the nature of God. <laughs> but we can start to want to just live in God's grace without repentance. God's grace is because of repentance. And if we've been saying we're going to do something, we said we're going to be there, we said we're going to do this, then we got to do it. It's a matter of salvation. You with me, church? Because bottom line, what you say is who you are. Look over back in James chapter 3. Come on, bro. You know, I heard a great quote one time. It said, my life is my message. It's Mahatma Gandhi. And Gandhi truly, his life was his message. He was willing to die for what he said. He was willing to die for what he believed in. Sound familiar? That's Jesus Christ. But one time, talking about Christianity, Gandhi said this. He says, I love your Christ. But your Christians, not so much. Why? Because he looked at the life of quote unquote Christians. To, that doesn't look like your Christ. He also said, Watch your thoughts, they become your words. Watch your words, they become your actions. Watch your actions, they become your habits. Watch your habits, they become your character. Watch your character, it will become your destiny. You see, for us, to be a Christian is a little Christ. That's simply what the word means. Yeah. Let's be those this morning as true little Jesuses that what we say is in fact who we are. Amen? Amen. Our second point. God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. Remember our first point. What you say is who you are. God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. James chapter 3. We'll pick it up where we left off in verse 13. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor very envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such, quote-unquote, wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. Mm -hmm. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder in every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness. Mm -hmm. We stop here. Why do we need to think before we speak? Because God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. Yeah. We've got to be what the Bible calls to be prudent. Yeah. To be prudent simply means to give careful thought of the future. And oftentimes we say and then we think. We say and then we kind of, oh, well, what I meant and what I, I... This happens all the time for me in my marriage. I'm very emotional. I go, blah, blah, blah. I say some shit, and she's like, did you mean this? No, no, what I meant was, why didn't you understand that? You're still so dull. And she's just like, that's not what she said. Why? Because God's way and God's wisdom, I wasn't prudent. I got angry. I got rash. I got harsh. And instead of thinking, huh, and biting my tongue, and go, if I say this, what is that going to produce? And kind of walking through like the Doctor Strange, you know, like seven million, like, you know, end game possibilities. You know. All right, I figured out which one I'm gonna say. But a lot of times, oh, absolutely, this is what I'm gonna say. I don't care what's gonna happen. At this point, you know, that, that's not the wisdom that comes from heaven. It's a bitter envy. It's a selfish ambition. It's earthly. It's unspiritual. And the Bible says it's demonic. You know. 
God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. We see James is back to, to what we do. Why? Because as we, we just heard from a, a man who is not a Christian that our words become our actions. Yep. This is what we want to focus on. Yeah. Verse 17. But the wisdom that comes from heaven it says pure, peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and sincere. This is what we've got to go after. Well, where does that come from? Well, James 1, verse 5, says if any of you lack wisdom, right, you should ask God who gives generously without finding fuss. But when you ask, don't doubt. Because you're like a, a weight tossed back and forth. See, we've got to make sure that we're those, we get our wisdom from God. Yeah. It's fascinating. The Bible starts with what kind of wisdom comes from heaven? It's wisdom that is pure. Matthew 5 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. See, we can't start anything great for God unless we're pure. I think many of us, we gotta search our hearts. How's our purity then? How's our purity? When it comes to lust. Pornography, masturbation, immorality. If these are still in our life, we're not living like Christians. Wow. Plain and simple. Yeah. Come on, you can't do anything for God. You can't even see God. Mm. You don't understand what God wants you to do. Yeah. You're blinded. And I think for us, we gotta we gotta ask ourselves, what do we look at? Mm. Yeah. We like quote unquote fall into these sins. And, oh, that's weird. I don't know how that happened. No, absolutely. Yeah. It's because what you're looking at. Yeah. It's what we listen to. It's what we choose to be around. So wait, wait, wait. I, I, like, are you going to seriously try and monitor what I watch? Yes. No? But I'd be able to tell what you watch by what you do. Yeah. Wait, are you saying that like, I have to change the music that I listen to? Yeah. Mm. No? I'm just letting you know this is what's going to happen if you don't change it. Yeah. Wait, are you telling me who I, who, I can, who I can or cannot be around? No, I'm just going to be able to tell you how much you care about God's righteousness. Yeah. See, all of these decide whether or not we're going to be pure. Mm -hmm. And then once we're pure, we'll be able to understand truly what is peace like. Because we'll have peace in our lives. When we're living an impure life, we don't have peace. Yeah. We have to, like, sear our conscience to be able to, to go, okay, I, I'm pure. No, no. We have to sear our conscience. You know what? This doesn't bother me anymore. Mm -hmm. We become considerate because impurity is so selfish. Yeah. When we're selfish, we're like, the amount everybody knows what's going on. We think about ourselves, we get angry. It's submissive. We go, ah, I don't want to do that anymore. Impurity leads to us no longer wanting to submit to God. Yeah. Then not everything as a disciple becomes a burden. What we have to do. It's full of mercy. Well, you can't give something that you don't have that you don't understand. And good fruit. True repentance brings good fruit. Yeah. You know, we got to take a challenge simply to stop doing it your way and start doing it God's way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stop trusting your wisdom and start leaning and learning God's wisdom. We don't need to have it all together, but we got to give it all to God. Mm -hmm. I really want to challenge a lot of us here. I think we put our culture above the kingdom. Come on. Mm -hmm. We put... Whatever, whatever, whatever ethnicity or experience we've had in the past, over the word of God. Come on. That, that, that's not what the Bible says. Right. There is no like white Christian, black Christian, Asian Christian, Latin Christian. There's no nationality Christian. Yeah. We're just disciples. Yeah. Yeah. And some of us, we lean on the wisdom of our culture. The wisdom of our past, wow. the wisdom of our family, which is not biblical at all. Yes. Yes. And we struggle. Yeah. We become deceitful. We hide sin that's actually going on. We go, well, I didn't like lie, I just didn't say everything. Mm -hmm. That's lying. Yes. The Bible calls we gotta change that. Yeah. We don't have to have it all together. We're a mess, guys. Yeah. We're a mess. Yeah. Follow me around for a couple days and be like, that guy is a mess. Yeah. <laughs> What is going on? But I go, I, I want to have God's wisdom in my life. Yeah. I want to change. Yep. Oh, I want to be sharpened. I want to use my God. Yeah, come on, and I believe all of us want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a church that wants to do that. Yeah. Yeah. We have a church that wants to change. A church that wants to love. Yeah. A church whose life is their message. Yeah. A church who's 
action is by what we speak. You know, I'll never forget this incredible couple. Colton and Mandy Rowe. Come on. Come on. See, Colton was baptized over in the church in Phoenix about 10 years ago. He's originally from Ohio. And Mandy is a dear sister baptized back where I was baptized in Eugene, Oregon, about a year before I was. And so here they were. He was living in Phoenix. She and Eugene, they met at a conference. They started dating. So sometimes you go, man, where is Mr. and Mrs. Wright? And we start to want to settle for Mr. and Mrs. Wright now. Whoa. And so trust in God. Yeah. Wasn't even in the same church. But because they lived as sold-out disciples, they found each other in the kingdom. They started dating, and God called them to be a part of the ministry that was sent out to Long Beach, California. And over time, they led that south region. Well, while they were there, the Holy Spirit then sent them out to start the ministry in the Inland Empire, the largest part of the Los Angeles church. They got married, and what was amazing is their first kiss was at the wedding. Oh. Oh, what? You can't do it absolutely when you do it God's way. Yeah. 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 When you do it God's way, you can be absolutely pure. In fact, that should be the norm. Yeah. 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 That, should, that should be absolutely what we do in absolute purity in our relationships. Yeah. Well, again, so they go from Long Beach to the Inland Empire. Believe this. Believe, check this out. While in the Inland Empire, Colton studied with a young man named Jason Woody. Oh. <laughs> he gets baptized. <laughs> then, during that time, they transition with another young couple who was going to be part of the London ministry, Tyler and Chase Sears. And we have the opportunity to take over their ministry in the IE, and the Holy Spirit sent them out to London, England. Then, from London, they went to Boston. From Boston, they went back to Los Angeles to oversee the Orange County region. And then just earlier this year, remember, Colton's from Ohio. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit oh, yeah. sent them out with a mission team to Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's awesome? This mission team, in the last five weeks, has seen five baptisms. Oh. A mission team of just 13 disciples wow. is now seeing weekly baptisms. Yeah. Why? Because for them, they understand that God's way, God's wisdom is better by far. Here in DFW, we got many who are studying the Bible. We gotta be praying for them to be baptized in the next few weeks. It's time to stop kidding around in your studies. It's time to stop just flattering them. But we gotta get in there and challenge them to change. Simply for us this morning, what you say is who you are. Let our life be our message. And lastly, God's way and God's wisdom is better by far. Mm-hmm. That for us, that we've got the ability to be pure, yeah. to be peace-loving. Yeah. We've got the ability that as we trust in God, as we're pure, we can see what God desires and we can live it out. Yeah. Let us today simply understand we've got to think before we speak. And let's be the change that we desire to see so that we can make this truly God's kingdom on earth and God be the glory. Thank you so much.